If you wanna build an impactful, profitable business, one of the first things you're gonna to have to do is learn how to delegate tasks to a team, how to train that team, how to find that team, how to build that team to the point where you can really grow your business and reach your objectives. In today's episode, I sit down with Louise, who is the CEO of Smart Virtual Staff, who have a team of 35 virtual assistants. We're gonna be digging into systems, processes, and how you can get the most out of a team to help you reach your goals in your business. Stay tuned, it's coming right up. Hey, what's up? And welcome to another episode of the Impact Unlimited podcast. This is the show where I sit down and interview industry leading experts with an aim to equip you with both the skill sets and the mindsets to become an impactful entrepreneur. So if you want to become a better leader, build bigger businesses, get more done in less time and create an impact in the world, then look no further and let's get started. Awesome. Well, welcome to the show today, guys. It is my honor to have Louise here from Smart Virtual Stuff. Welcome to the show today, Louise. Thank you so much, Matt, for having me today. Uh, it's awesome. Our privilege to have you on the show. I'm super excited to dive into the topic we're going to talk about today because it is one that is absolutely vital to growing healthy businesses and it's helped me so much in recent times. So I'm super excited to, to discuss this with you. Before we get into it, uh, I love to ask our guests a little bit of an icebreaker question, you know, just to uh, warm the audience up. And so I thought I'd ask you the one about time travel because it's the one that's uh, interesting me most at the moment people's different answers so that said if you could time travel forward or backwards at any time where would you go to and why um i would go forward oh, nice. because huh. with what's happening right now i would just skip over 2020 and just go <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right that's a good answer yeah get straight to 2021 hopefully the world has recovered and got back to normal that's an awesome answer good stuff so louise tell us a little bit about um, what you do with smart, smart virtual staff how you started give us your origin story sure um my name is louise sandoval i am the ceo and the co-founder of smart virtual staff i started as an independent virtual assistant back in 2014 that was a long time ago and i just graduated from college then i actually graduated as a laboratory scientist i wasn't supposed to be working uh, you know with all this digital stuff so but here in the philippines it's really hard to find work um in the hospital one thing that we all we all know is that we will go abroad to work as a healthcare provider. Mm. But then on, um, I jumped, you know, I encountered a website that were looking for uh, people who could write blogs for them. And I, I, I used to write blogs for people before. And then I applied for the job. And then it went on from one client to another. To I ended up with my business partner right now, who is in Florida, is a physical therapist. So I helped him with a lot of stuff. And then... I had a lot of offers, but I was re as a, a Filipino, we're very known to be loyal. Mm -hmm. And I was really loyal to my business partner and that I couldn't leave him, even if the offer was like 10 times greater than um, what I used to have. So I told him, what if we create this business that we could help a lot of entrepreneurs? Because these entrepreneurs are actually stuck. And what happened to you and me was that you needed a course up in one week. And then I did that for three days. How about we give them, you know, what we've done and, you know, use all of the systems that I've created in place for you and, you know, help this fellow entrepreneurs that we have. And they're struggling. And to earn that money, you know, they, they're always stuck on fiddling on little things for their, you know, business instead of focusing more on their content. So uh, in 2016, I told them that, okay, I get trained people here in my city um, when what I do and then we could set up that firm and then mm -hmm. we went on from three virtual assistant teams and one client to now 35 uh, virtual assistants after wow. three years almost and then we have 250 clients amazing amazing what a story and it's so true what you say about entrepreneurs getting stuck in those details and the things that hold them back i know for me that was definitely my personal experience getting caught in the weeds doing the detail stuff when actually i shouldn't i should be spending more time working on my business than in my business it's a old cliche but it's so true right and so um, talk to us a bit about how you help your clients do exactly that 
Okay, so our clients mostly are online entrepreneurs or coaches, and they they do all of their stuff. Like they know that you know they can do this or they can do that, or they've maybe taken a lot of courses to do all of this stuff. Maybe from setting up a funnel, they've you know they've gone through, but. To tell you the truth, they haven't finished all the courses. And if they do everything in their business, they might take a hundred of courses. And all of those just end up to the course graveyard, courses graveyard. So most of our clients, um, they want to like set up their online businesses or focus more on their students. And how we help is, you know, go through the back end, um, set their systems in place, make sure that they're organized from their files to their passwords to um, the platform that they use and create SOPs for them as well. So we provide teams because we know that one entrepreneur doesn't just need one person. They mm -hmm. need a whole team to help them from the small things to the big things. And um, they already um, have their video editors. They will have their graphic designers. And then um, they also have their project managers to help them up to date the task and have their one point person. So, um, our team or our, 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 our virtual assistants help them from um, the different areas of their business to also, you know, doing customer support. So a lot of all those stuff. And what we want our client is to focus on their business movers or their high dollar value tasks. Yeah, great. And, it, and you know, it, for me, it's obvious that you have practiced what you preach in terms of, you know, you've built your organization to 35 members of staff and, you know, you clearly are working this stuff out in your organization yourself. So I would love to dig into some of the strategy, some of the keys that the entrepreneurs that are listening right now can actually take away. As I said, I know for me, it was a big challenge overcoming this idea of, letting go of control of creating systems and processes so that other people could do this work. Um, talk to me about some of the, the limitations, you know, for entrepreneurs, there might be a hurdle for them to get over. It might be a challenge for them to start with this. And I'm sure, like I say, many listening may be thinking that would be nice. And I'd love for someone to help me with this, but here's my problem X, Y, Z. Talk to me about some of the limitations you see entrepreneurs having with this and then how they can overcome them. Mm, I see. So a lot of entrepreneurs have this um, hesitation to let go or delegate hmm. because number one, logistically, they don't know how to do those. Like, right. would, they don't, would they know how to do this? Would they know how to do this platform? They might have all of those questions in mind and hmm. they have their own doubts. So the number one thing that I suggest, um, you know, for those who are listening right now is to list down their can do and can't do. So right. differentiate what you can do, what you think that you do best or your high dollar value test and what you can't do. And then list down as well the can, your can do's, but you think that you could let go or, you know, you know that you could do them, but you, you could let it go. Yeah. And um, this hesitations come from, I know I do, I do this best. Would they do it as best as me? Mm. But, you, you know, that thing, you know, trust, I think, is the number one key factor as well. So mm. you just have to trust uh, that person that you are, you know, delegating to. Mm. And, um, the, you know, every, I know that everything virtually is also based on trust. Because, you know, you will trust your coach. So trust the person that you're delegating to as you trust your coach or as you trust your students as well with your content. Right. So. And number two, I think, is work on your communication. So um, a lot of us might, you know, might, might think that, oh, yeah, I communicate well. I know how to use these communication platforms. I know how to use all these project management platforms. But do you know how to make quality feedback? You know, because feedback is very important, especially when we are in this learning curve of working with virtual assistants. I tell you that the first two, two weeks, it won't be a smooth sailing. It won't be a smooth <laughs> as they promised it will be yeah, true. because it's a learning curve and yeah. you must know how to work with a person you must know how to get, give feedback especially when you know it's the first time that they've encountered a project the task mm. so very essential and um number three i guess might be um just to let it go and um you have to think of it that you know um, I always tell my clients this because so, if you if you don't let this go right now, if you don't know how to, to let go, you won't 
know how to scale your business because mm -hmm. you can do it best, but somebody could always do it better than you. And they might, you know, um, you know, give you, uh, they might also teach you something that you don't know. Mm, totally. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know everything. Um, yeah, you know, sure. to be more, you know, skilled than you are. Yeah, for sure. I, I think, yeah, you're so right as business owners, we think only we can do it to a certain level. And, um, but I've been amazed as you know, we've taken on team, you know, we've got team members in the Philippines and, you know, there, I think there's this wrong mentality sometimes that we are, um, you know, we can just outsource to cheaper staff. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a case of cheaper staff and lower quality. There's incredible quality. You know, our team members, we value them so much. The work they produce is great. And, and I've been amazed, you know, at how when I actually let things go they can just blow me away with what they can actually create you know and it's like oh I wish I'd done this sooner because actually there's uh, you know there's it, it, as long as you do the hiring process right and maybe that's something we can talk about how to find good people um, then the, everything else seems to you know really really take care of itself so um, so I, like I say definitely definitely helpful and I think for us you know just in responding to what you're saying what's really helped is is definitely the idea of repeatable tasks and creating systems around those so for us anything that has uh, become a, a repeatable task such as uploading a blog uploading a video anything like that that can be a process can be drawn out that's something that a business owner can really quickly begin to delegate so they can focus on more high level tasks you when we were talking before you mentioned about how systems processes is a big part of your role uh, could you speak to that a little bit for entrepreneurs how to begin to create those systems and processes so that they can begin to delegate some work because like you said that first step is the hardest those first week or two is is a real challenge because it can feel hard but what can I get in place to get over that first step mm -hmm. that's a good question Ben. so actually I have experienced this myself you know I just went on live last week and I told about the worst client that we ever had and that was me because I didn't create or documented all processes that took place in my business sure. so when I have my own team as well to do the marketing for smart virtual staff I realized that oh my god I am the worst client that this company will ever have because I haven't documented all of my processes so what I did was I did things on my own and then recorded them right. you know I used platforms uh, like Loom um, and then I recorded them and I created a whole spreadsheet of how I do everything and then from that on, I just, you know, I just wake up to things being done already. And that's the greatest feeling ever. It's yeah. like your business running 24 seven mm. and documenting doesn't really have to be that detailed as long as you, you know, you show them how you did it. Mm. And especially when you're giving feedback. So let's say when you've delegated a task and you've given a feedback, that's already a documented process. Mm. And number one thing as well that I need to remind entrepreneurs is, you know, the first thing that you did your business, do your systems in place already because you won't have to wait to work with teams to create those uh, systems and it actually pays off to have systems in place. Mm. Yeah, 100%. And what we're finding as well, Louise, is that uh, that library of processes gets built over time. You know, and I think a lot of people don't do it because they think it's a big job. And, it, you know, at the beginning it is. It takes time. It is admin. But what you'll find is if you just create enough to get started, then over time it just continues. Like every day we're adding new processes. When one of my team does something for the first time, um, the beauty of it now is that actually the team can then create the processes. So, you know, you can then build out this library of things that you can go back to time and again so you can grow the team and so on. So, yeah, like you say, it's a process, right? But uh, that's, it only is going to happen when you first take that first step and get started. I agree. We need to be obsessed with the process itself. And, mm. you know, every day is, you know, we're creating new processes. So it's not, um, it's not new to us as, as entrepreneurs. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Hey, quick little break in the show just to let you know about a wealth of free resources we've got for you. If you want to develop the skill sets and the mindsets of a successful entrepreneur, we're here to help you do exactly that. You can find a range of free courses on topics such as how to start a business, brand building, marketing, building online courses, and much more. Just head to impactunlimited.com slash training. That's impactunltd.com slash training in order to access this resource. We're regularly adding new training, so keep your eyes on our website and on your inbox. We'd love to help you on the journey. All right, back to the show. 
So for you as someone who hires people, um, hires virtual assistants, for anybody out there right now that is looking to potentially hire a virtual assistant, they've heard about how helpful it can be and what a game changer it could be. How, uh, what would be some advice you would give to entrepreneurs going through the hiring process, you know, from the very early days? I see. So if you're someone new to outsourcing or hiring people from overseas, the number one that I would um, recommend is to go uh, very detailed with your job description. Right. Always put in um, what you need, uh, what skills does you need or mm. um, qualifications or requirements. If you need someone who's faster into that or like a, a high powered laptop, let's say you're looking for a video editor. Mm. And then also, one trick that, you know, to filter out all of the, um, the applicants is to have this trick as we use this. Um, and you'll also know how detail oriented with them is that let's say you put in, um, when you apply, put in your subject, I'm a rock star. And if they don't follow that automatically, okay, they didn't pay attention or they didn't, they didn't even read the whole job description. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you put it in, in the middle or sometimes we put in, um, put your favorite, uh, meme of the day. Mm, or attach yeah, yeah. the favorite meme of the day as well. So we put in those tricks to make to narrow down the applicants. I tell you, if we post right now on um, one platform that you could you could use is online jobs at PH yeah. to find yeah. virtual assistants. Yeah. Uh, if you post right now, you'd get a hundred or tons of applications, but you need to find someone who fits. And number two would be to ask um, an interview and make sure that they have their camera on. So you know that these are real people. Yeah, Some, you know, we might have to, I, you know, it's not, um, it's not new. There might be scams or there might be people using other identities as well. So you might need to have them on camera and submit their valid IDs just to be sure and be more secure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You're, you're so right. And what you're saying, having a good, robust interview process, uh, application process is essential. And, and as I said, that's what we've learned sometimes the hard way is that, mm -hmm. you know, the more time and effort you put into the hiring process, the more chance of success you have. And I think often entrepreneurs may try hiring a virtual assistant. It doesn't work out once and they give up on the whole idea not realizing that even in hiring local people, there's still sometimes it doesn't work out. It's no different. Humans are humans and you have to go through a process. And so what you've described there in some of our training, that when we teach people building teams, we call it uh, like a, an interview funnel or a hiring funnel. You know, it brings people down that funnel. Yeah. Um, making sure there's something like that for us. We often ask like, what's your favorite book um, or, or anything like that. Yeah. Like you say, it helps bring that funnel down and so um yeah really really helpful and what we've also found i don't know if you find this louise is actually the best people are interviewing us you know as well as we're interviewing them they want to know if they're working for a good company that's where mm -hmm. i know it's a good person because and and that's where it comes back to what you said about a detailed job description you know you see some people put on online jobs we want an admin assistant apply here and it's like you, you know, what's going on, but we are, we make sure we have a really detailed job description because I find the best people they want. And they've noted that because we always ask them, why did you apply for this job? And the people we go on to hire always say, you know, we really appreciated the detail you put in the post. So that's a great tip, Louise, that I'm sure will help a lot of people. Definitely. No, that's good. That's really good. So um, do you see uh, the way the world is going changing, right? So we're in the midst right now as we're recording this in this sort of coronavirus situation, and there's a lot more people working from home. Um, how, how do you see the world of online, um, online business and remote working changing? Do you see it getting stronger? Do you see it growing? How, how do you see, where do you see this going? I think this is the new normal. And then I think it's going stronger and it's, you know, scaling to a number that, you know, we can't even imagine mm -hmm. right now. I just had seven discovery calls of people looking for virtual teams wow. and it's amazing. Like, you know, they just, I, either of them are, you know, just starting with a new business or like mm -hmm. setting up their, you know, their businesses online or like, um, transferring their business online. I actually just talked to a university um, from the US that they want all of their curriculum to be online and they don't know how to start. So, <laughs> you know, this is the new normal. And I'm so, I'm so glad that I am in this industry and that this industry is, is changing in so many ways um, and that people are now open 
people usually, you know, when here in the Philippines, when, when you're asked what you do and you tell them that you're a virtual assistant, actually they, they tell that it's not even a real job. Just like online, <laughs> online entrepreneurs, you, 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 you tell them that you have an online business, they would laugh at you. But right now people are asking. So but what's happening right now, this is the industry that you would want to be in. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of our team that joined a couple of months ago, she was telling me recently, just like the timing of this, you know, has been so good. And now everybody's turned around. Everybody's saying, how did you get this? You know, how did you do this? And lots more people interested. And it's a good point. And I'd like to ask you about that. I think because, you know, when I tell people that have never heard of this principle about what we do and how we grow our team, we have both local team and remote team overseas. And they, they have this idea of, you know, call centers in other nations, and maybe it's a bit of a negative idea. Was actually, I, I try and tell them, no, actually, there's the people that work for us, they love to work for us. Actually, it's a, it's a great thing that they're doing. Um, you know, talk to us a little bit about that, from, you know, from your perspective, living in the Philippines, having 35 virtual assistants. Um, talk to us about your perspective. Mm, I see. So I have to tell you that Filipinos love the Western culture, and mm everything abroad we even go abroad just to work mm -hmm. or you know like apply you know do a lot of applications to do abroad and us working with you know with with people around the world is just amazing in how mm -hmm. we connect with each other um lately we've been doing check-in calls uh with our clients and then asking them what they're doing uh, how they're doing right in this time is it's just changing you know they we 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 can also relate to them because mm -hmm. right what well, we do Every, what, what's happening right now is global and we are all experiencing it and we connect um, with them. And um, we're, as Filipinos, we know we're, 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 we're very fond of working with a lot of people and that, that this has, you know, a, this, this industry has changed a lot of our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe a lot of people are hesitant, you know, working with people overseas because they might not have, or they may not communicate well, uh, or they might not, um, understand um instructions or they might not um relate or like you know just just trust them because they're overseas they, they're not here they're not local so i say that you know there are a lot of differences but our differences makes us closer because mm, it's yeah. like you know you're like right now on ben it's it's morning and here in my it's actually in the evening and yeah. it's so funny when people when our clients say oh my you live you live in the future so um, we, we love working with people around the world. And, you know, it's actually how we learn um, about what's happening. We actually learn from you and you actually learn from us. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And as I said on the call, before we got on the, on the recording, you know, we just so highly value our team members from the Philippines. There's such an incredible culture uh, of loyalty, of work ethic. And, uh, you know, so from our point of view, it's, it's never been about let's find cheap labor, but let's actually make this a win-win situation. You know, we might not be able to hire a full-time um, executive assistant locally, but we can do it in the Philippines, but we can also provide great opportunity for them. And I think that's one of the big limitations that entrepreneurs have is that mindset of um, you know taking that first step because how it might be perceived but you know when I was running interviews for a role we filled recently several different people told me about like the traffic is just one example you know there's so many people in sort of Manila and areas like this that will, will take two hours there and two hours back from work to travel 20 kilometers you know it's just insane the yeah. You know, and so just that alone, that time that they get back by being able to work from home uh, is something that they love. And, and so I think it's, you know, gone are the days of this idea of, you know, uh, you know, uh, draconian uh, bosses that kind of lord over people. But actually, hey, we're a team. We're in this together. And let's build something that we all enjoy, you know? Yes. And that's what I love about our clients. And then he, um, when we hear this with our team members, they said that, I actually plan to go abroad and leave my family, but when I got this opportunity, I am spending more time with family and actually earning what I could have earned abroad. Mm, yeah. 
Absolutely. No, it's good. It's really good. If you, um, I mean, this has been super, super helpful, Louise, hearing it from your perspective, not only from the systems and processes of building a successful business, but from your unique perspective, obviously being in the Philippines, I feel like this has, you know, just been so, so helpful for a lot of people. If you could give, you know, kind of one bit of advice, a golden nugget, you know, something that entrepreneurs could really take away from our conversation today, what do you think that would be? I say delegate or die because, you know, if you don't delegate now, you know, you're, you would be burned out with your own business. You won't be an entrepreneur and not, you know, not allowing that idea of delegating would get you stuck as self-employed. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, you should delegate and learn how to work with people. Yeah. Amazing. I can't echo that enough. It's so, so true. Again, from personal experience, having got caught up in the, you know, that burnout of trying to do everything myself. And, uh, you know, so one of the greatest things we ever did was really start focusing on a team. So, um, Louise, you're the expert of, uh, of, of all of this, of virtual assistants and building this all out. So if people do want to connect with you any further or even explore, you know, using your services as smart virtual staff, I know that you have a great proposition in terms of bringing a sort of complete team in on a, you know, a small basis to begin with and then grow from there. Um, it's a great opportunity for people to explore this. How, uh, how might they go about connecting with you? Um, you can find me in www.smartvirtualstaff.com. I have a link there to book a free discovery call with me. I can help you as well assess if virtual assistants are fit for your business right now or if you need to still have your systems in place. Yeah, that's awesome. And I can't recommend that enough to you guys that are listening, um, you know, seeing the kind of uh, contributions that Louise makes in entrepreneurial groups we're in on Facebook, you know, she knows what she's talking about. She walks the talk. And so, uh, yeah, it's a really, really valuable resource it would be to connect with her. So make sure you take advantage of that. Louise, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, really excited by what you've built and uh, we're really, you know, it's an amazing thing that you've done so far and uh, looking forward to seeing how the journey continues to unfold my pleasure ben thank you again for having me no worries at all hey well thanks so much for being with us on the impact unlimited podcast today if the content has helped you in any way please reach out we would love to hear from you tag us on the socials if anything has inspired you from this episode and listen if you've got two minutes to spare we'd love it if you'd leave us a review on your chosen podcast platform honestly we'd be forever grateful and to show that when you do be sure to enter our monthly appreciation prize draw where we give away amazon vouchers to our podcast community simply head to impactunlimited.com slash podcast that's impact unlimited unltd.com slash podcast in order to find out all the information as well as explore more free training content listen it's been a pleasure and remember don't just make an income make an impact all right we'll see you next week